You know, that's a good question. I um, don't have any lawyers in the family. I, um, after undergrad, I was actually an officer in the Army for four and a half years. I did um, ROTC in, uh, in undergrad. Then I, um, I was with the uh, 4th Infantry Division out of Fort Hood in Texas. We came back from the second deployment and they were gonna start gearing up for the third deployment. And I said, you know, I can't, I can't just keep doing that. A year there, a year home, a year back. Um, what, what is it about your time in the military that translates well to being an attorney, if anything? Um, the military is very detail oriented. Um, a lot of structure in the military, um, kind of chain of command, everything. Um, and personal injury law is a very detail-oriented uh, area of the law. I mean, there's a, um, you got medical records you got to review, you got statutes of limitations that if you miss, you're looking at a malpractice suit. Um, you got everything, once you file a lawsuit, the judges, when they put a trial order out there, it all has timelines that have to be strictly complied with, or you could, you could have your client's case dismissed, you could, um, you could personally be sanctioned, I mean, there's just, so it's, um, I think just having that military structure has been very beneficial, uh, keeping these cases on track and getting the, the best results possible. What was it about Fair and Fair that had held some attraction for you, though? I mean, it's a larger firm. Is that an attractive thing? Oh, it's a larger firm. Um, it's well established. I think it's been, been in a local firm since 1979. Um, there's their track record. I've seen um, some of their senior litigation attorneys um, doing various things at the courthouse. Um, just seemed like a good, uh, a good fit, a good lear learning opportunity, and um, kind of a um, um, step up almost. Okay, good, good. A place to grow. Oh, for sure. And yeah. the kind of um, everyone's real friendly, open door policy. If you have any questions, you can pretty much knock on anyone's door, walk in, ask them a question, and they're all. Yeah. All willing to um, to help you out, including Chuck and Eddie. Including Chuck and Eddie, they have a they've been uh, very nice, very open. Um, they're very, very seem to be very honest people. They let you know from the beginning. Do you ever have any issues? You can't get it worked out. Um, more than welcome to just come and don't have to have an appointment. Just come knock on their door and they're willing to see you. So you're telling me they're not just TV lawyers, right? <laughs> they're like real lawyers. They're real lawyers, for sure. The insurance representative isn't sitting at the defense table. It's just um, someone's grandma or someone's mother, or someone's whoever, just um, whoever caused the accident is sitting there at the table. And um, why I think most juries understand that the insurance industry is paying for the defense, you're not allowed to actually mention the word insurance during the trial. And the defense always tries to imply that any, if, they, if the jury awards a whole bunch of money um, for this case, that poor grandma sitting there at the table is going to have to, it's going to ruin her credit, she's going to lose her house and everything else. Which they don't come outright and say that, but that's an implication they, they make throughout the trial. You're not allowed to say insurance. You're not. Really? Why? Any medical records, everything, you have to go through page by page and redact any mention of insurance, insurance carriers, what the policy limits are on that particular insurance policy. All that stuff gets redacted out of the, out of the records. Okay.